Hello and welcome to the latest in the Leaders with Ambition podcast series. And today I am absolutely delighted to welcome my guest, Maureen Penfold. Maureen is Managing Partner at Moore Kingston Smith. And this is going to be such an amazing podcast today because we're going to go through Maureen starting as a trainee at Kingston Smith back in the day to now being her, in her current role as Managing Partner. And along the way, there's some really interesting stories that she's going to share with us. Uh, very much how important business relationships have been to Maureen over the years. And she very quickly, her client base, she got involved in managed owner businesses and SMEs. So really had that exposure to the business world. And that's something that she really thrived on. We'll see her take through that um, iteration to when she decided that she was going to become a partner, which she did very successfully quite early on in her career. And then she made the decision that she was going to start a family. Um, And one of the things I really love about Maureen is that she's remained her authentic self through all of this and and really helped to build her own personal boundaries between the work and home life balance. Not always getting it right, as none of us do, but definitely making sure that at the weekend she was there with her family and her friends, which are incredibly important to her as well. And um, Maureen then was instrumental in moving and um, walking Smith onto Smith onto the global platform uh, during this period of time, moving to the more global network. So she'll share some of the successes around that and also share with us some of the challenges that managing partners are facing at the moment in the, a lot of firms, um, which, again, I think will be interesting for so many people. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Maureen to bring her career history to life for you. Maureen, over to you. Hi, Nikki. Thank you for that introduction. Certainly a trainee a long time ago, I would say that, but um, (laughs) um, here we are. So delighted to join you and really to sort of uh, pick up on my story, I suppose, I think is um, the plan this morning. Yeah. You know, and really, I suppose you can only ever go back to where your roots and where you came from. And certainly for me, that was very much growing up um, within a sort of Irish Catholic community in West London and sort of really, I suppose, growing up in London, but assuming that, you know, London was a city and spending a lot of my holidays and time in Ireland. So very much from those sort of Irish roots, although I have um, sort of was born in England and been here all my life. But my early days were very impacted by that community spirit around me. And you had the best of both worlds then, the ability to be in London and in a city and then being able to go, I don't know if you call it home, but going back to the family in Ireland and having such a different experience in life must have been amazing when you were growing up. Yeah, I suppose I didn't, I mean, I didn't really realise it was different because it was my life, which was sort of, um, you know, West London uh, in school time and on a farm in Ireland in holidays, so saving hay and making turf and driving tractors and very rural, really, very rural. But that was a lovely contrast. And as I said, it was sort of really that led me to not really even understanding that England had such beautiful countryside for a number of years because <laughs> I just got on a train and went to Ireland. So um, it was interesting, but it certainly grounded where I was. I'm also um, within that community. I've got three brothers which I think has had a major influence on on who I am in terms of um, being able to understand working with in a male environment, really. And it was a, it's interesting, isn't it? You very male dominated environment that you started working as well. So I'm sure having those three brothers really did ground you. Yes, totally. I mean, I think, you know, back when I started in the profession, which is obviously quite a long time ago now, um, it was a very male dominated world. There was myself and one other female trainee when we started at Kingston Smith way back then. And the world was very male dominated. But to be fair, having grown up, in a male dominated world, it didn't really phase me. You know, I went to a convent school. So I had away from the boys when I was at school, which again meant, you know, you were sort of, when you go go to an all girls school, one of the things that does is it does really build, you know, your confidence as a woman, because there's nobody there to distract or think that they're better than you. (laughs) Um, So that sets a scene as well, I think. And I think it's interesting for you, you know, you, you mentioned uh, to me in the past that you, your family and friends are so important mm. for you, aren't they? And that, yeah. that started off, as, as you say, being part of this community, mm. also quite rare. 
Yeah, I would extrapolate that throughout, really. I mean, I've still got um, one of my best friends is somebody who I went to nursery school with. So it does go back a long way. (laughs) And I have a group of friends, both girls and guys, but I have predominantly a group of girlfriends that I've probably relied on throughout my whole life as sort of people to talk to and probably to moan at and can give you some good counsel as you go. I've got a very strong family. Again, you know, I'm sort of very focused on having those different support networks, I think, because that allows us to be who we are, because nobody can do anything on their own. And so I see things as a community, whether it's my family, my friends, or even in business, it's really about those relationships and people around you who make you successful. Yeah, it's so important. And taking you back then to to your school years, I think uh, you and I talked about this and school wasn't necessarily where you wanted to focus on as you were growing up, which is interesting looking at you now in your professional capacity. Mm, Yeah, I'm not sure I should admit that, but um, (laughs) effectively my school years and particularly my teenage years, I was school was really of no interest to me whatsoever. Socialising and going out um, were much more interesting. And so I sort of spent my teenage years really being a bit of a rebel, really, and actually enjoying life and perhaps not really understanding that one should get um, exams and education until I sort of at 16, as it was all coming to a close, suddenly thought, oh, what am I going to do next? Um, you, you took a role in the bank. And I think that's when well, you realised that you wanted to do yeah. to them, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, what happened then in those days, you could actually leave school at 16. So my plan was to sort of leave school at 16. And I had a job in a local bank, basically working behind the counter, which I never actually started but I had the job there. And then suddenly I had a Damascus moment and thought, oh my goodness, I can't do this for the rest of my life. This just sounds terrible. I need to have a bit more ambition. And so I thought, well, I'll go back to school. So I went back to school with a view of doing A-levels at the time. But to be honest, because I'd actually done nothing for the whole time I was at the school, nobody ever expected me to do anything. And it really was the right, wrong environment for me. So after one year, I did um, some exams and then I left and actually went to college. And I'm quite good at recreating myself. You know, I was good at primary school. I was naughty at secondary school. I went back to college and recreated myself again and became quite studious and actually put my head down and actually did some work um, and hence could actually then rebuild a career. But in those days, I thought that career was going to be in the hotel sector because that's what I went to college to do until I did my work experiences in in hotels and suddenly thought "Mm, no (laughs) not for me and then actually I had you know a very good accountancy um, lecturer at college who actually when I think about it it has influenced my life tremendously really because he just said to me why don't you think about becoming an accountant And at the time, I thought, I have absolutely no idea what an accountant is and tried to find out more um, and had one person in our sort of community at the time that was an accountant. So my father um, arranged me to go and see him. So I went to see him and he had a very nice office with a very nice drinks cabinet and told me that being an accountant meant you went out to lunch a lot. Um, And I thought, oh, that sounds a job for me. (laughs) If only that was the yeah, if only. <laughs> what I've learned since. I must actually remind him that he actually misled me in my career <laughs> advice. But at the time, it was probably the right thing to tell me because it interested me. Yeah. Um, and hence, then I switched across and started on the journey to do an accountancy. In those days, it was called Foundation Course. Yeah, which and you I were very focused on that. Once you decided that was that's what you wanted to do, you're a very focused woman, aren't you? And you yes. really put everything into that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, pretty strong minded, as probably people who know me would say. Um, and if I put mind to something, I usually can focus on it um, and really get that done. So I then, as I say, focused on that realized quite early on that um, most of the colleagues I was on a course with actually had jobs lined up so I had to sort of set about that and actually came across Kingston Smith in that search and actually started a training contract with them partly because I was really inspired by the leaders at the time and, and how they came across compared to some other people that I'd met on the I suppose job application journey and some were not very impressive at all and Kingston Smith were and hence I joined there and had a contract and and effectively haven't looked back since. Although, again, you know, I'm still one of those people that every five, five years or so needs to reposition myself and have a new focus. Yeah. So and whilst I I've been that, here a long time, it doesn't mean yeah, I've done the same wrong. thing. Exactly. And I think interesting, you know, as you said to me, around this concentration around 
own and manage businesses yeah. and being really able to see the value that you're mm. adding. And yeah. you spent some time in the States as well, didn't you, as part of that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I um, one of the th- part of the journey of my work career with Kingston Smith was you know, I did audit and accounts and tax originally, as everybody does. And then, you know, you're sort of managing accounts. And in those days, I was doing a lot of general advisory work and ended up really doing a lot of work with owner managed businesses. And one particular client, I ended up more or less helping run the whole business, which actually had um, operations in America and in the, in the far in Middle East, actually. So ended up doing a lot of traveling, a lot of trying to manage and organize businesses around the world, which was fantastic experience and incredible opportunity, really, to, to sort of get under the skin of business. But actually, as an advisor to own and manage businesses and becoming that trusted advisor, it's been really really something that's been really lovely through my career I've really enjoyed it where people trust you and you debate and look at their businesses and so I think all of those things I learned throughout my career have helped me at every stage for the next stage that I've gone on to. And it's been incredibly important for you to build your networks, hasn't it? And that's the thing I think has come throughout your career. And as you yeah. say, even when you, when you, you know, you're, you're reforming yourself every five to six years. You're building your network, you're building your mentors yeah. and your mentees. And that's something that's taken you through your entire career. What is it that's made it so important to you? Well, I think I, you know, people are what it's all about, really. Um, and if you you know, whatever your goals are, you know, if you if you keep the a focus on people and relationships, you tend to get there, I feel. And yeah. I, you know, I enjoy seeing both what you can learn from others. I'm, you know, nobody knows everything and you can learn so much from other people and you can't do any. And I don't think you can do very many careers unless you're a solo um, sports person or something on your own. You need others with you on that journey. Um, So for me, building relationships all around has been important, both from the business development, but also from my own development. And it's been fantastic through the years, being responsible for some trainees years ago that are now successful people in all sorts of walks of life, but also elsewhere. And so seeing people develop on that journey, I think, is something I found very rewarding and a big part of my career. So for me, it's about the success and seeing people thrive, both my clients and the people that I work with and spend time with, really. Yeah. But, you know, there were in it very different building relationships for networking and business development now than it was back in the day when I started. When I started, there was no internet or no connections you just had to turn up to events all the time and quite often being the only woman in a room and learning how to navigate some of those situations whereby especially back then perhaps as a young girl networking with slightly older men you know they can take things the wrong way and having to sort of make sure you could stand those boundaries yeah um, well, as, you, as you say having those three brothers you were very able to yeah. look after yourself I've never I think that's <laughs> been a, a a blessing for me in terms of my career is that I never ever thought about whether women or men you know yeah. shouldn't should or shouldn't that a woman can't do anything it's just never been on my horizon and I think I've been lucky in that I had a very strong even a role model in my mother who was a very traditional stay-at-home mother but very much wanted to see um career succession for me as well as family succession and I think the people I've worked with and certainly Kingston Smith was very advanced within that ahead of its day I didn't know that at the time but on reflection now you know we there were no barriers as being a woman within Kingston Smith there may be challenges when you're out networking there may be challenges with some clients accepting advice from a young female but um, but they soon got used to it but I think that's great as well, as you say, very unusual back then. And I think remember you saying to me that the managing partner at the time did really invest in you and yeah. you know, became a long term mentor, yeah. friend of yours as well. But yes. very unusual. So what what made it so special? Um, I think, well, I, I mean, to be as I said, I mean, I think I don't didn't really know at the time, but reflecting back, I think it was the fact that. The, the leader of the firm, he basically did not worry about, he had no barriers about women and men. Very traditional firm we were then, as all accountants were. Yeah. But but he, there was just no barriers to that. And it wasn't acceptable to, to, you know, not treat, if somebody was able to do something and do the job well, 
Now, yeah. okay, you may in certain areas had to prove a little bit more being a woman and be a bit more out there so that you didn't get um, forgotten. But I think, yeah, I would say I've been lucky that the people I've worked with within the organisation have always, you know, have not seen a barrier as a woman or even have helped when others have. Mm-hmm. So maybe when people have misbehaved or said something, you know, you've got, That's they've him. got your back. Yeah, and that makes a big difference. I think, I think it's really important, yeah, yeah. you know, it's and I think it's for us as women, but also for the men to step in when they see that behaviour. Yeah, that's really good. And you became partner at a young age. And yes. so again, that's really impressive. One, becoming a partner so young, but becoming a female partner as well when it was more challenging back then. Yeah. Yeah, we had a couple of females ahead of me in our partnership. Yeah. Um, in there. But yeah, so yeah, again, I suppose focus really is that when I was going to do something, I think I might as well do it well. So, you yeah. know, when I put my mind to something. And so once I'd committed that I wanted to stay in practice, then actually becoming a partner was a focus. Yeah. Uh, you know of, of what I wanted to do and did you need lucky. to set yourself those goals as well then Maureen is that's really important to yeah. you you can yeah. set goals again it's that drive for you because I know you're yes. a very driven person as well aren't you yeah I feel that I mean I've always sort of you know I always set myself goals you know I'm one of those people that throughout my career probably at the beginning of each year used to set a list of all the things I was going to do yeah. that year I'm not saying I used to tick them off but you know, <laughs> they at least were on a to remind myself and sometimes I'd even do it down to months or quarters so that I'd actually have something to hold myself to account against but yeah I think you know in terms of when I when I set my mind to something then you want to do it well but I do feel you need goals because otherwise it's easy time just goes and you can drift and for me back then I had a lot to do you know I wanted to be a partner and rule the world and I wanted also to have a family and all of those things so you know so I got married just before I became a partner and then I agreed with with the practice then and again really was long before people had sabbaticals you know, it wasn't a thing at the time, but my husband and I, we took three months off and went traveling around the world again with the blessing of my job of coming back straight into work and, you know, just having the time out, um, which I think was quite, you know, I suppose, future thinking of the practice. Hugely so. Yeah. As you say, it just wasn't a, the yeah. job back then, you know, so no. it's a forward thinking. Fact. Yeah. Yeah. And so then was able to come back and then really take up, you know, then I became a partner and I was able to take that up having you know, having not travelled earlier in my life, um, sort of in terms of that sort of freedom of three months off to do a, in those days, round the world trip with the Lonely Planet book, again, (laughs) with no internet to find your accommodation, but, you know, and working out where you would go next by the travellers you met coming the other way. Yeah, uh, slightly. That's uh, the best way to do it, I think. Yeah, (laughs) different to today, different to today, but fun. And then you decided um, when you were coming back, you know, you, you, you stepped up in your career, you decided it was the right time for, for you and your husband mm. to start a family. And you have um, two beautiful sons uh, that uh, I know you're very, very proud of. Yeah. And quite early on, you said that your work was going to be important for you and you were going to have the time to be able to develop your career and to dedicate to to your job but you also wanted to be a mom yes you wanted to make sure that you could do that so how did you make that work well I have to say that the you know I've got to give my husband a lot of credit I don't very often um but he um we I hope he's listening to this then Maureen yeah, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> we were in you know as in a way when you know we were when we got married we were a partnership so it was how does it work best for us to go forward and really you know how should we do this because we both wanted children and I suppose it was a conscious decision that my career was going in a direction that if he if that could be supported that that was great and then he agreed that he would take his career still have his career but in a more localized position so that one of us because I find you know we felt that one of us needed to have a bit more focus on um, be available if you were having children as opposed to just career because in those days that juggle was a little harder less mobile phones less connectivity and all of that stuff really and so we said about we agreed that that's what we would do he would take a local position and then really I had my first son um, who's 29 now so it's a long time ago but it was interesting because we also at that point my husband said well maybe I'll take time off and look after the baby 
But back 29 years ago, men did not look after children and take time out, which I think is a really good thing that happens now that it is much more shared because we were probably, you know, quite original at the time we shared, we agreed we had children. It was both of our responsibilities. It wasn't one or the other. And we'd just work out how best to do it for our family unit rather than what the norm was. Right. But unfortunately, most of the um, women that uh, my husband met with the baby classes, etc., used to drive him berserk. So he said, no, I've got to not, it's not Michael's fault, my son. It's actually all the other people I need to get away. Yeah. <laughs> so we then were entered into the childcare. But for me, you know, the most important thing when you have children is being able to be comfortable that when you're in work and your career, you can step into that and not worry about your children. And then when you're looking after your children, that you can step away from work and focus on your children. It's You can't blend the two and be worrying about the other, I think, at yeah. the same time. Not if you want to have a balanced mental health. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's so much harder now as well, isn't it? Because of this 24-hour yeah. uh, access, you, everyone's got emails on their phones, yeah. everyone's got WhatsApp reaching out. So it is, it is a challenge. How do you build that level of boundary in, for your teams into, into work now? Well, I think one of the things is really making people feel comfortable that that is, it's fine. You know, your your family, off, you know, most of us are working for our family. So the families have got a t- priority and you've got to get balance. I mean, you know, it, it can't be all about one or one. You need both to, to make yeah. yourself whole, really. And we believe in that whole self to work piece, which means that when people need flexibility with their children they can as a in our new hybrid world what we've done is we've set our sort of in touch hours that we want people to be between 10 and 3 to enable people who are working at home or not to be able to do the school run or to focus on their children but you know some people want to have early time off and then work later everybody's working different hours and that is a challenge um, and making sure people understand that that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but that's quite hard because, you know, I'm also one of those people that likes to clear my mindset. And so you send emails out at all sorts of hours because it helps me. But that yeah. doesn't mean I expect somebody to come back to it and trying to make sure people understand that across the whole organisation. And, and I think I think that's a really good point. And I know that you're very strong on communicating and one of the um I think one of the positives of, of the COVID was something that you shared with me about the the managing partner webinars and talks that you were doing. Yeah, yeah. and that again is that you know that whole communication piece is yeah. at every level, isn't it? I think so, and I but at every single level and throughout my career. And one of the things I've learned both in the businesses I advise and our own, probably you know the number one thing in any business is communication, communication, yeah. communication. You could say that's in any relationship too, but hey, yeah. very true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's both um so yeah it was really quite interesting because uh prior to prior to covid um we i used to send out emails of updates and one of my partners used to keep saying you should do a video and to be honest i used to shy away thinking oh my goodness no i can't do that but actually when we all moved home back in march 2020 and everybody was working from home and the pressure and the you know, the responsibility for all of those people and people were very anxious. I started doing managing partner updates on a webinar, a bit like this, really. Yeah. Um, sort of talking to the camera and sometimes with other people. And though at, during the sort of height of the crisis, it was almost a couple of weekly because it was trying to keep people up to date and really accepting that, you know, I didn't really know much more than them and had, you know, but we were all in it together. And that level of communication and trying to keep people up to date I was overwhelmed with how many people logged on, quite bluntly, <laughs> which was the <laughs> majority of the firm. And I thought, oh, this seems to be of interest. Okay. And then now, you know, we've carried it on. And what we do now is every month we have a managing partner update with various different people will attend as well and speak. And we speak and I speak to the whole firm. And the point about that is trying to make sure and what we learned through COVID is communication and transparency is everything. You don't have to have all the answers, but you need to be able to let people know, you know, what you're thinking and what you're considering so that they're aware, you know, that if they don't have the answers, that doesn't matter. You can learn together, really. Um, And so we do that every month. And actually we do it live and we do it on video. And most people 
tune in and can have an update. But I try and cover all areas of the business because in some a business like ours that's growing quite fast, there's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, and trying to make sure that everybody feels included and part of that team um, as we grow means people need to understand, you know, what's happening. Not They're not necessarily greatly interested in every detail, but at least they have the ability to understand what the decisions are and why we're doing things. Yeah, and I think, think that's so important. Yeah. I really do. And, and you know, I think that's the one thing you hear from people, isn't it? That yeah. feeling of, you know, of of the, not just the communication piece, but that they're part of something. Yes, I and think. that's what you want people to feel. And I think we learned that in the COVID days really well in that, you know, people were isolated and needed to be part of something and you couldn't rely on the chats at the cool, you know, cooler moment. It was, yeah. we were all sort of split up but needed to keep together. And I think, you know, communication's always been a focus, but now, I, you know, it was one of the biggest worries I had was how we would communicate. But actually, it's been one of the greatest successes of coming out of it, learning that actually open communication is key. Yeah, that's great. Great learn through the COVID period. Yeah. As you say. And um, going back to, to you stepping up in your career as well, I know that you had your children, you would have had a really successful career. Mm-hmm. And then you decided that you wanted to help take the firm to the next stage, didn't you? And that was coincided with Brexit. It coincided yeah. with the managing partner. Rod, do you want to share? Yeah. Well, effectively, in essence, really, I ended up, I suppose, at at one of those inflection points that you do. One of the businesses I'd been very involved in had sold. So I had a gap and it was, you know, what do I do now? Am I going to rebuild a book of different clients? What happens next? And then there was an opportunity with the firm and where we were going and the succession and the changes. And I always say I'm sort of the old, the youngest of the old guard (laughs) within um, our firm, really. And we had a lot of change coming up so there was an opportunity really to step forward um, and take on the managing partner role as part of a team and working with all the good people we've got and actually leading that change and I you know and that was something I did without really knowing what I was taking on if I'm honest but it has been an incredibly rewarding role and the people around have been fantastic and we've all together moved more Kingston Smith on from Kingston Smith of old into yeah. what I would call is who we are today, which I think is really is that we want to be that challenger firm, that top 10 modern business, but an inclusive place with a really big focus on people. And I think we've achieved that, but also giving great service to our clients. And how did you get the partners to come on that journey with you? Because it, it is a it is a big change, a big difference, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, as a partnership, we've always been, you know, we've, the partnership culture is really important within MKS and we still believe that today because actually if you can bring a group together and support in professional services you know your partners have to come with you or you just can't do it it's not like some businesses where you're very you know top down and you can just get things done it isn't it's slightly different than a corporate and so um, a group of partners really we saw that there was this need for change in the next generation and so we sort of all got together and somehow I ended up as being the you know the person who would step forward one of my partners um, my predecessors she stepped forward for the first year as managing partner and then you know I took the gambit on really to sort of try and drive this change and it's been the fastest changing time in my whole career in the profession yeah. but it's been great in that you know we've managed to move forward at a pace as a firm some might say a little bit slower than they would have liked but you have to bring people with you so it takes time but it's been exciting we're now I think quite a different type of firm but we're built from our roots we're 100 years old this year and so it's really important I think when you're managing change that you don't throw away the past you build on the past and you respect the past but you evolve and I think we've done that. And I'm really proud of the people and in the firm and that, that have gone before and are here now that really lead has led us to where we are. And I think we're in a good place. And so what was the reasoning behind joining the more global network? You, you, you wanted to take the firm globally, didn't you? you know, yeah. Why? Why did you think that was important for your firm? Well, for our clients now in this current world, it really was important that we could have a global reach 
we can service them wherever they are. Now, we had a great association we were involved with before, but it was quite small. And then the opportunity came along to join more global, which meant sort of a step up really of joining a global network that's quite mature and had infrastructures and was quite an exciting place. More global aim is to be one of the uh, most respected networks in the world, suited our values and felt like the right place and also a top 10 global network and had ambition. So we were going on a journey. So it just felt right. So we stepped up and joined that in 2019. And then we became more Kingston Smith, which was our next evolution, not missing our past, but building on that. And certainly that has really helped us realise and be proud of what we've got, really, and and wear that bigger hat and feel like we are, you know, that top 10 successful firm. A lot's happened in a few years, which is yeah. exciting. <laughs> yeah, it is. When you think about it, I mean, you know, know. Really, that's COVID said, in the middle. Yeah, I know. I took this job on Brexit, and that was the scariest moment when yeah. I suddenly re- realised I was responsible for everybody when they were very depressed about it. <laughs> um, but you know, and felt sort of and, and reached out actually to my previous um, mentor, as I said, to actually get support at that mm-hmm. point. But you know, and then we had COVID, and then we had you know, whatever else is coming down the roll next. But I think, but still, I think if you, you know, there is such a opportunity for professional services firms with good people to Mm. develop those people, but you have to keep moving. The challenges are immense and they are faster changing. You know, COVID meant really was good in one respect because it meant that we could change things so quickly and people could get with that once they realise we've just got to keep going and, you know, we're all vulnerable, but we can all get there. Yeah. And um, then it meant you couldn't miss a good opportunity to actually make sure things continue to change. Yeah, make the change. And I think it's interesting, again, like you say, during that period um, when you took over in 2016, there's lots of challenges happening post-Brexit, that you reached out to a, a mentor. Mm. and. And I know that's something that you strongly believe in is mentoring and the relationships that people need. And that's something that you've built a really good system yeah. at Morton Smith around, isn't it? Yeah, we have. I mean, it's really I feel it's really important both in terms of and um, how I've progressed has been having people to reach out to. And I still do now, as I say, you know, nobody knows everything and you need you need people who you can talk to in a safe environment, but also that you can listen to and take advice. Yeah. And then we've built our own sort of internal mentoring networks and really try and encourage people to reach out. We also do quite a lot of coaching as well. And I use a coach myself. These things, I think, you know, you, you can't, you all need support. Nobody can do it on their own. And I think that would be my strongest message. It's about team and people together and yeah. um, having infrastructures that you can trust. For me, I've got them in business, but I've also got them at home with my family. And of course, I've got my girlfriends. Yeah, to so keep you grounded. Totally reliable to put you back in your place. <laughs> That's what they're there for, isn't it? And, and what would you say the biggest challenge is facing firms at the moment then? Again, I think it's probably people, talent. Uh, we are still um, got a shortage of talent, but also how you continue to develop people in this really challenging world. Mm. So I think it's it's a re- availability of the right resource is a big challenge because there's a lot of growth opportunities and trying to get that challenge between opportunity and resource correct is, is a big one. And where people have got different experiences, how do you bring them and develop them to get them to the right stage to be able to look after those clients and develop the business? That's a big challenge. The excitingness things around technology you know where's AI going to take all of this how do you embrace it how do you do that in a safe way with data protection and data management and cyber risk so those technology changes I think make people a little bit uncertain but I think if we can embrace them and keep moving then that's good but that is a challenge in our profession regulatory and technical is a big challenge we're dealing with regulatory change and regulatory pressures as well as I suppose, technical um, disclosure changes as well. Um, So you've got to combine all of that with the people development. How do you keep moving the sort of the clients needing more support? Mm -hmm. Because one could say that and definitely back in a few years ago, it was all about, you know, technology is going to take over from accountants. Well, that's just not true. You know, The more technology you use, and I believe the more AI, the more people you're going to need to actually yeah, do that. Relationship that, and relationship. that connection piece, isn't it? Totally. Yeah. And our clients, that's what they want. They want somebody to support them. Where you're managing 
for instance, in our owner managed businesses, they're quite isolated. So they need people who they can trust to talk to and help support them through their changes. If it's a nonprofit organization, they need help from people who've got deep expertise across the financial sector or even the larger corporates. They need reliable people to support them. So in the end, I think, you know, there are it's people probably is the biggest opportunity and success, but also the biggest challenge, making sure your people are properly developed and that you've got enough of them in this current yeah. shortage of people. Yeah, and I think you and I have talked about this, about the importance of you know, retaining your people yes, and making totally. sure they've got, uh, you know, all of the growth that they can get in an organisation yeah. and, and then you and know, developing them. Talent and, yeah, the development and attraction as well. Yeah. And I know that you, you know, it's something that is very um, dear to the hearts of people at Morkington Smith is D&I. Mm. But, you know, you do have a lot of, of, of role models and you do have allyship groups because you believe this is all part of Yeah. You do keep people uh, retained in the firm and, and having personal development. Yeah. And I think I think the one of the things I would say is that people need to bring them whole, their whole self to work. They don't want to be somebody else. Now, yeah. OK, often you have to sort of step on a stage a little bit if you're presenting or whatever, but you want to make sure that you can be authentic. I think one of the strong parts of our culture at MKS is authenticity. Mm. So that's where I think if you come back to ED and I, you know, you need to be able to be who you are and be supported yeah. in that role. And so we've got some great different subcommittees across our ED and I group. And it's amazing because, you know, I, you know, don't, I'm a, a product of my background. I don't understand necessarily what it's like to be in somebody else's skin. So actually having people who do and can advise you the little things that could be better for those people is great. So we are, we've got a really active EDI group and they do a really good job in educating. Yeah. And advising us as management to make sure that we are creating the environment we think, because it's very easy to look at things through your own lens and not other people's. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I know that you do a lot of work and it's it's quite visual in the marketplace as well, which is really great to see. And, and what would you say have been your personal highlights then? Because there's been so many throughout your career. What would you hone in on? Yeah, well, I would, I mean, I'd hone in on where we are today in the firm and the people around me. But I'd hone in on to say that, you know, to see where I'm very proud to be leading MKS and all the people in it today and where we've got to and excited to see where it will all go next. But also to see all the people that have come through in the, before me and will be after but also that trained and that have succeeded I, I love it to see people's success really and our own success as MKS yeah fantastic and 100 years wow that'll yeah. be a big party celebration this year no yeah doubt. totally yeah we've been do, we've been having lots we love a party <laughs> so we've had lots of excuses to celebrate okay. and we've got a big party coming up in June which will be really good oh, fun fantastic good I'll look out for that and and then what would you say have been your personal biggest challenges throughout the, your career time <laughs> there's never <laughs> enough of it <laughs> yeah. I would say it's a big one um and I think I think just making sure that I stand back and, and get balance in my life mm. because you know you've got to look after yourself otherwise you can't do anything really but for me you know there are obviously at the early parts and any working mum will know that challenge of you know between being a mum and in your career and you know making sure you've built those boundaries and don't feel guilty in one or the other so I, I would say that's probably one of the challenges you know the there's been lots of little ones along the way, but generally um, having being able to stand back and regroup on a regular basis, I think, has kept yeah. me whole. Uh, and you, like you say, your friends and family oh, you along the journey. Totally. Don't you? I, I'm, you know, really, you can't, nobody can do anything on their own. You know, as I say, I have my friends, my family, my communities yeah. all over the place, yeah, including at work. Yeah, and all my partners and all the people, you know, we've got brilliant people at MKS. And that's what the business is. It's a people business. People. Yeah. It's about people. So it's not about any one individual. It's about everybody together, the collectiveness of what we can do, which oh, is exciting. Cool. It's, it's really exciting. And, you, and you, you're very open to self-reflection, as you mentioned. You know, you have an executive coach. You mentor, you get mentored. You're, you're, you're very open to um, personal development. Is there something that you go to? Is it do you have a um, you know, certain books that you read? Do you look at podcasts? Is it news? Is it people? Where where do you get 
your um, information from to help you continue on that journey? Well, I would say probably everywhere. I mean, I'm, you know, prior to podcast being a big thing, I used to go, to, I go to lots, I go to lots of these sort of sessions that people run for different right. things. I'm always curious to find out, you know, what other people are doing. So different sort of, I suppose, support mental groups that run different things in different professions and different people. I'm a bit, I like reading about different business things I can't think of a particular book now at the top of my head but you know in terms of I just read a lot about different styles of business and management I've looked on the internet I read I'm curious really yeah. and I think there's some fantastic you know and I'm I'm not one that really becomes an advocate of just one methodology right I tend yeah. to find I take little bits from everywhere and try and read that into how I can be myself because I'm not very good at being somebody else. <laughs> I can develop what I've got, but I'm, you know, I, I, that authenticity is quite important to me because yeah. then you've got to be comfortable in your own skin. But, you know, there's some great learning. On, we run some great courses. I've got a fantastic learning and development team here at MKS. But, you know, so, and the more global network actually to run some great courses as well. And there's some great, you know, sort of people are willing to share their experiences. That makes so, that, I think that curious, um, yeah. curiosity is, is so important yeah. because you will go out and find it. Yeah. And it could be, as you say, through conversations, through networking, yeah. through reading, through yeah. podcasts. And I love to pinch a good idea. That's oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind where it comes from. <laughs> yeah, don't reinvent the wheel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the out there, isn't it? Yeah. And so what words of wisdom would you share then? Maybe to Maureen when she was going to go and work at Midland Bank, but changed her mind to, to uh, present well, I'm glad I did. But I think for me, you know, it's about really um, making sure that you do, you know, not every day is going to be fun and jovial. But I think you have to in life set out to do things that you're going to enjoy and that you feel are actually value to you and look at your own and self. And one of the things that I'm also quite good at is I look at my journey and what I want. I don't I'm not that I don't worry too much about what other people are doing, I, yeah. you know, and I think that's allowed freed me to make decisions that without trying to compare myself or worry about others. So I think it's about being independent. I think you can have a great career and be a mum, but you have to be able to divide, have those barriers and build those boundaries so that you can allow yourself to flourish. So um, that's all I would say. I think be yourself, really. Yeah. I Build love that on what you've got. Yeah. yeah, that really shines through with you as well, Maureen. Yeah. A lot of people that work for you see that, feel it, and you encourage it in others, which yeah. is all paying it forward all the time, isn't it? In yeah, wrong it is. You're the responsibility. You yeah. Know, important isn't it yeah it is and I think that you know you have to enable it and you know nobody knows everything and I think being open to learn and make sure that you're happy to have open conversations just because you don't know doesn't mean that you know the world's going to fall apart you can learn (laughs) (laughs) so I do which I think is about that's about authenticity is realizing that you can learn from others and confidence as well like yeah. you say you've got to build that confidence to be able to say well I don't know yeah and um, you know let's let's ask someone or let's find out or let's do it together and we've got brilliant people around me that are much better than me so why would I not listen <laughs> to them you know uh, you know on different skills and different areas you know it's, it's a secret it's, to successful leadership isn't it I agree get people who are better than you to do <laughs> <Yeah>. the job <laughs> love it well thank you so much for your time today Maureen it's been honestly really interesting such a pleasure to speak to you and I think you you know the authenticity shines through I think the fact that you know getting people to really focus on something and commit to something and then look at your network look at other people that you can help and they can help you so thank you so much thank you thanks Nikki